One of the favorite uh, pastimes of politicians in Washington is to talk about how frustrated the American people are with politicians in Washington. After the past few weeks, it's easy to see why. I'm talking about the president's promise repeated dozens of times that if you like your health care plan, you can keep it. And the sobering realization by literally millions of Americans that it just wasn't true. Some of the top fact checkers in the country have used uh, terms like pants on fire and false and four uh, Pinocchios to describe the claim that under Obamacare, folks would be able to keep their plans. In a matter of weeks, it's gone from being one of the law's top selling points to a national punchline. And if millions of people weren't so frustrated and upset by it, it might actually be funny but it's not the least bit funny. At this stage, about 50,000 folks are believed to have signed up for insurance on the federal exchange, way, way below administration estimates. That's 50,000 who've signed up for insurance on the exchange, while 3.5 million Americans have lost their health care coverage. In other words, about twice as many folks have lost their insurance in the state of Idaho alone since October 1st as have obtained health insurance across the entire federal exchange all across America. <clears throat> so this is a real crisis. In my home state of Kentucky, over a quarter of a million people have lost their private health care plan so far, and only about 7,000 Kentuckians have been able to obtain new private insurance under Obamacare. If you consider that Kentucky received $250 million in taxpayer funds to get Obamacare up and run it. State of Kentucky got $250 million in taxpayer funds to get Obamacare up and running. That works out to about $35,000 per private insurance enrollee. $35,000 per private insurance enrollee. And that's before the taxpayer subsidies kick in. So we've thrown literally untold millions at this disastrous rollout. And what do we have to show for it? Millions of people losing their coverage, despite assurances from the president they'd be able to keep it. He said they'd be able to keep it, period. That's what the president said. So let's be very clear about something. These insurance cancellations are not any kind of an accident. This is no accident. It's the way the law was designed. Remember, in order for Obamacare to work, millions of Americans had to lose the coverage they had purchased on their own so the government could dump them into the Obamacare exchanges. That way, the government could then get them to pay more to subsidize coverage for everybody else. That's the way this thing was designed to work. The 31-year-old dentist from Louisville I mentioned last week, the one who isn't married and has no kids, but now has to carry pediatric dental care on his plan, well, he's one of the unfortunate ones who's now subsidizing care for everybody else. And despite the fact that the president and the other supporters of the bill, bill vowed up and down that folks like this would be able to keep the health care plans they had and liked, the fact is that was never true. It was never true and they knew it. They knew folks would lose their coverage. They knew it all along. Just as the president once famously predicted that utility rates would necessarily skyrocket as a result of his cap and trade policy, so too would health care rates skyrocket under Obamacare. The only difference is that on health care, Democrats apparently knew they couldn't tell people how it would all shake out in the end. But they knew. That's why in 2010, every Democrat who was in the Senate voted against a Republican proposal designed to hold the president to his word. Back in 2010, every Democrat in the Senate voted against a proposal to hold the president to his word. The fact is, the president's health care law was designed to capture millions of middle-class Americans, jack up their premiums, and use the extra cash to keep Obamacare afloat. This isn't some unforeseen consequence of the law. It is the law. It's working just like they designed it. 
just like what they voted for. So it's hard to take seriously this faux outrage we've seen of late from some of our Democratic friends. And as for the president, well, this should no, be no great revelation to him either. Just the other day, the media pointed out that the administration knew for years, for years, that Americans would lose coverage. But there's something else. At a bipartisan health care summit in 2010, the president was asked directly about this kind of thing by House Majority Leader Cantor. In reply, the president admitted that 8 to 10 million would have to change coverage and then justified it on grounds that they'd be getting better coverage from the government once they lost it. So the president actually admitted during that event that millions would lose their health care and still went out on the campaign trail claiming Americans could keep the health care plans they had. This is why Americans feel so hurt by this particular broken promise. And what many of them want to know is this. Why would Washington Democrats persist with it even after it became clear it was false? I think the reasons are simple enough. One, they needed to pass the Obamacare bill. And two, they needed to sell it to a skeptical public. And neither would have been possible without it. If the president had gone out and told people that if he likes your plan, you can keep it, if the president had said if he likes your plan, you can keep it, it would have never passed. And that's why the president's so-called apology of the night rang so hollow for so many. Obamacare's problems run so deep and the prom broken promises are so pervasive that it's impossible to identify an easy fix. It truly ought to be repealed or delayed. But if the president is sorry for breaking his promise to the American people, there is a natural place to start. He could support legislation that would help restore the plans for the folks who want them back. And he could act on it as early as this Friday. That's because the House is expected to send over a bill that would allow Americans to keep the plans they have and want to keep. There's no reason the President and Senate Democrats should not join Republicans and the American people in supporting it. This doesn't have to be a partisan battle. These cancellations have, haven't discriminated based on party. The people out there who are frustrated and upset at losing their health care plans are Democrats and Republicans. The President can help all of them by backing the bill the House is expected to pass on Friday. I think that's basically what President Clinton was suggesting yesterday when he said the President should honor the commitment the government made to these folks, even, even, said Bill Clinton, if it means changing the law. I've had a lot of disagreements with President Clinton over the years, but at key moments he was willing to cross party lines, and I think here's a moment where the American people are expecting President Obama to do the same. Allowing Americans to keep their health plans is a promise Democrats made over and over and over again. Whether or not they meant it, Democrats promised this to the American people, and it's their duty to make good on what they said. Once the House acts, my conference will be watching closely to see whether the Senate Democratic majority allows a vote and will help us send a bill to the president's desk. The American people will be watching closely as well. So my message to the president is simple. Mr. President, our constituents are frustrated and they're upset. You could help do the right thing.